This is Section 4.8, Applications to Business and Economics. Our second objective is to solve story problems involving linear demand functions. By the time we're done, I would like you to write the steps that you would follow in order to solve problems of this type. With Example 1, a store has been selling 200 DVD players a week at $350 each. A market survey indicates that for every $10 rebate offered to buyers, the number of players will increase by 20 a week. We want to find the demand function and the revenue function and then answer the question how large a rebate should the store offer to maximize the revenue. So the first thing we have to do is find that demand function and we are assuming that it is linear. So in order to write the equation of that demand function, because it's a line, I'm going to need a point and I'm going to need a slope. So in order to find the point, I need to read the problem and realize that on that demand function, which is a decreasing linear function, I'm going to have points whose inputs are the number of items sold and whose outputs is the price that we charge. So I'll have a number sold and the Y coordinate will be the money that is charged or the price. So I can use that point 200 comma 350. It's important that you use the number of items versus the price in this order. If you mix them up you're going to be finding the incorrect demand function. We want the independent variable to be the number of items that are produced or sold. Next we need to find the slope. Well slope is typically a derivative but we do not have a function to take the derivative of. We do however have another point on this that is buried into in the words. This says a market survey indicates that for each ten dollar rebate, meaning that this price will go down to three hundred and forty, then I'm going to increase the number of players that are sold by twenty. So I would get a two hundred and twenty as my x coordinate. So if I compute the slope by doing y minus y over x minus x, I will end up with a negative 10 over 20 or a negative 1 half. Once I have the point and the slope, I can write the equation of the linear demand function as the slope times x minus the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. If I simplify that, knowing that I'm going to have to compute a revenue, I will get a negative 1 half x plus a 100 plus a 350 gives me a plus 450. I also want to find the revenue function. So we've got to remember that revenue is the number of items we sell times the amount we're charging per item. If I multiply this demand function times x, I will get a negative one half x squared plus a 450 x. Now the goal is to answer the question how large a rebate should the store offer in order to maximize the revenue. So to maximize this revenue function we need to look at when its derivative changes from positive to negative. So I'll take the derivative of this and get a negative x plus a 450. Remember that the revenue's derivative will only change sign if I'm at a critical point. So the critical points are when the derivative is zero or undefined. I'm never undefined, so my only critical value is going to occur when x is 450. If I do my sign chart analysis now, knowing that I cannot make negative DVD players, or cell negatives of them, I have the one critical point at 450, and if I look to the left of 450, I can see that I'll have a positive R prime and bigger than 450 I will have a negative R prime. So that means R is increasing and then decreasing. So I will have a max revenue when the number of players sold is 450 and the reason we know that is because R is continuous and R prime changes from positive to negative. Now, 
We have found the number of DVD players we should sell, but we haven't answered the question yet. The question is, how large a rebate should the store offer? So we can't compute the rebate until we know the price that's being charged. So I'm going to take this 450 and plug it into the price function, and I will get a negative 225 plus 450. So the price I've charged at four, for 450 DVD players will be a negative 225 plus a 450, which is a $225. The question is, how much of a rebate did I offer? Well, we originally charged 350 each, and now we're going to charge 225. So the rebate is 350 minus that 225, which ends up being $125. With example two, we have Troy making and selling necklaces on the beach. Last summer, he sold the necklaces for $10 each, and his sales averaged 20 per day. When he increased the price by $1, he found that he lost two sales per day. For part A, again, we're going to find that linear demand function, which requires a point and a slope. The point, remember, will be the number of items we're selling and the price that we're charging. So we are selling 20 necklaces when we charge $10 each. And then the slope is going to come from the second point that is buried in here when we do the slope formula. So he increases the price by $1. That means he'd charge $11, and he's going to lose two sales per day, so he'll only make 18 sales. The slope will now be y minus y, which is 1, over x minus x, which is negative 2. Once we have the point and the slope, we can write the equation of that linear demand function and get a negative 1 half times x minus 20 plus 10. Looking ahead, I know I'm going to have to use this demand function and take its derivative. So to make that easier on myself, I'm going to multiply this out. So I'll get a negative 1 half x plus 10 plus 10 gives me a plus 20. With part b now, we want to maximize the profit. So we have to remember that the profit is the money that comes in minus the cost. Well, the revenue is the number of necklaces Troy's selling times the price that he's charging. So if we multiply the price he's charging times x, we get a negative 1 half x squared plus a 20x, and now we've got to subtract the cost. Well, the material for each necklace costs him $6. So if he makes x necklaces, the cost will be 6 times that x. If I simplify this now, I'll get a negative 1 half x squared plus a 14x. Now my goal is to maximize the profit, and maximizing occurs when the slope on the original function changes from positive to negative. So I'm going to look at the derivative of that price function, which will be a negative x plus 14, and now I need that to be 0 or undefined. It's never undefined but it is 0 when x equals 14. If I do a sign chart now for the derivative of the profit function, I know I cannot make negative ne necklaces, but at 14 I have a slope of 0. Prior to 14 I will have a positive slope, and after 14 it will be negative. So I can say that the maximum profit occurs when x equals 14 because p is continuous and p prime changes from positive to negative. And now I've got to answer the question. The question is, what should the selling price be? So I'm going to take this 14 necklaces and plug it into the price function and figure out that p of 14 is a negative 7 plus 20 which is $13. So we could say Troy should charge $13 per necklace. So now I would like you to figure out what were the steps that we followed in solving both of these problems. What was the process? How did we go about it?